This video was made with the help of our amazing patrons. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. It really means a lot to us. Called the greatest commander the Shards have ever seen, her brilliant strategy routed the Grixis hordes at the Battle of the Split Peak. Her clever diplomacy diverted the Esper Council in their plot against her. Welcome back to Affinity 4 Commander with a special deck tech chosen by our fantastic patrons. Our commander this time around is the Queen of Banter, the, the Princess of Tippity Tapping, and the Devil of Evading Command Attacks. Durevi, Imperial Tactician. For one green, one white, and one blue, Durevi is a 2-3 legendary creature bird wizard with flying. She reads, Whenever Derevi, Imperial Tactician, enters the battlefield or a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you tap or untap target permanent. And for one generic, one blue, one green, and one white, put Derevi onto the battlefield from the command zone. What's that? Command attacks? Never heard of it. Derevi on her own can function as ramp, a forever available blocker, as well as creature control against our opponent's big threats. Yes, you go to combat with that Blightsteel Colossus. Flash in Derevi and tap it down. Dab! Then proceed to win the game. With our elegant general, yes, she is a general, leading our deck, it can take a few different archetype routes, two of which I'll be going over in this video. These are Blink Value and Prison, or, if you prefer, Death and Taxes. Our General already comes with a fantastic ETB herself. Being able to tap down opponents' problematic creatures, artifacts, or even lands if we're feeling particularly mean. But we're also in great colours for Enter the Battlefield effects, and we have access to a nice array of Blink effects. Cards such as Reclamation Sage, Solemn Simulacrum, and the Sun Titan are great for value and hindering our opponents who are trying to establish a value engine with artifacts or enchantments. But they are also more numerous than Sand in the Sahara. For good reason, they're fantastic cards. However, we might be looking for something with a little bit more flexibility. Cloning effects with cards like Clever Impersonator or Progenitor Mimic are fantastic to flicker. Having them re-enter the battlefield as one of our opponent's bomb creatures, maybe even with their own delightful ETBs. Beyond this, we also have access to cards like Karmic Guide and Revelark to help recur not just our clone effects, but also our smaller value cards. Our card draw for the deck comes in the form of Mole Drifter, Tishana, Voice of Thunder, or just some really nice early game creatures with Wall of Omens or Elvish Visionary. But my favourite pet card for this is Ephara, God of the Polis. We are really wanting our blink effects to be instant speed, with Ephara out and some good timing. Then we can draw a card in all of our opponent's upkeeps. Not to mention she works perfectly with Derevi's instant speed ability to put herself onto the battlefield. But just drawing cards for the entire time doesn't win the game. Sit down Mr. Maniac, we're not talking about you. Blinking our impactful creatures can generally create enough of an opening to get in for some good damage. Especially with cards like Merc Fiend Liege or Mirror Entity buffing all of our creatures. And yes, Craterhoof can do that too, and can even be blinked before going to combat. Or if you want to go even wider, blinking token producers such as Avenger of Zendikar or Hornet Queen can really help advance your board state to overwhelm your opponents. Now, we've talked about the value we get from repeatedly having our creatures come into play, but how exactly are we going to accomplish this? We've got the good old-fashioned Cloud Shift, Momentary Blink, and Eerie Interlude for starters. Looking at creatures, we have the Evergreen, well, 
ever blue, Dead Eye Navigator, Restoration Angel, or if we've tinkered with our mana base well enough, Eldrazi Displacer. Also, if we have the mana, then our dear Displacer can team up with Mystic Snake to put a rather soft lock on the game with a three mana on board counter engine. Which leads rather nicely onto the other deck archetype I want to talk about. Prison. Often called Death and Taxes after its modern counterpart, this style of deck seeks to increase the cost of spells to the point of grinding out a win through slowing our opponents down considerably, or just making their mana no longer sufficient to cast their spells at all. This style takes full advantage of Derevi's ability to tap or untap target permanence, often targeting our own lands to get around some of the nasty stacks effects. Winter Orb, Stasis, and Horoki Dust Drinker are just a few cards to see our opponent's mana production grind to a near standstill. While we can attack with our commander and untap our lands from there, and continue nearly unhindered. But what would death and taxes be without the taxes? Increasing the mana cost of our opponent's spells whilst denying them untapped steps is just one more nail in the coffin. Cards like Grand Arbiter Augustine IV helps make our spells cheaper but hinders our opponents, and Aura of Silence really helps slow down any artifact or enchantment based deck. And we can also throw in some more annoying taxations with Virum Wingmare, Kataki Wars Wage, and Thalia Garden of Thraben. Or my personal little bit of unfunness, flashing in an Avon Mind Sensor when our opponent cracks a fetch or casts a tutor spell. I am a bad person. Having more flyers also increases the likelihood of being able to hit an opponent to trigger Derevi's ability to untap our permanence, helping us ignore our prison cards entirely. Overall, this is a grind. The deck is purpose-built to deny our opponents their resources while letting us continue as normal. Whether that's making sure nothing untaps, making sure it comes into play tapped, or just shredding the value of our opponent's decks by denying searches or preventing ETB effects with cards like Hushwing Griff. Which I do appreciate the irony that this card nearly shuts down the previous version of this deck we went over. But, well, bolt it or something, it's just a 2-1. Moving on to the support, both of these decks have a similar affinity, no pun intended, to mana rocks like Basalt Monolith and Mana Vault. As Derevi can easily steer around these hefty untap costs and just do it herself. Beyond these, cards like Bident of Thassa and Coastal Piracy are fantastic for refilling our hands whenever we hit our opponents, and can give us more options with what to do with all that mana we just untapped. Now, this is a card I initially overlooked, but Birthing Pod is ridiculous with Derevi's ability. Not only to untap the pod to use it again in the same turn, but you can just sacrifice Derevi over and over again to put 4 drops into play constantly. Every turn I'll tutor up a Stoic Angel, Linvala Keeper of Secrets, or Captain Sisse. Another great untapped target by the way. Birthing Pod is still a great card, and fantastic in Derevi. Two others that I want to just touch on are Dowsing Dagger and Growing Rites of Etlamok. Not strictly related, but both do flip into lands that are good on their own. But with Derevi untapping them sees us having a lot more mana available. And in this slightly creature heavy deck, Growing Rites is easy enough to flip. And for the dagger, our commander has flying. She can just soar over those plant blockers to easily flip the dagger and make it hilarious to abuse. Oh. And of course Panharmonicon, we're running Panharmonicon, we're not being silly here guys. The lands of the deck don't especially differ from any normal band deck, but I do want to give some special mention to the bounce lands here. Selesnia Sanctuary, Azorius Chancery and Simic Growth Chamber. 
Using Dorewi's ability as she enters essentially makes her ability only cost 2 mana. These, coupled with Temple of the False God, can create situations early in the game where you get to play out much more of your hand much earlier on than other people. And don't be afraid to put in those scry lands from Theros either. They help fix the top of your deck and can be targets for your combat triggers if you have literally nothing else. Overall, Derevi is a highly versatile commander with quite a few routes to go down with the two mentioned here being really fun to play at, well, not unfun, but be prepared for a game of Arch Enemy, let's just say that. Not only do I love the design on Derevi, being able to ramp us quicker than our opponents while still being able to play defensively when needed to tap down a big threat is just fantastic. But Derevi also comes from the late and great Commander 2013 set, when Wizards first started experimenting with what could be done with Commanders as unique cards. This is also the set that brought us Prosh and Deloro, don't forget. Being able to consistently get around Command Attacks and being able to do it on our opponent's turns is just great. And no, a 2-3 Flyer in Commander isn't very threatening. But the build-up of untapping lands, value cards, and slowing down our opponents, that's threatening. I love this card, I love the design, and Derevi is definitely one of my favourite commanders. Both for her uniqueness and fantastic design. But what do you think of Derevi? Is she too powerful with her ability to avoid command attacks? Are there any auto-includes from the deck that I've missed? Let me know in the comments below. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at 4Commander. And if you really like us, you could consider becoming a patron. Links in the description. We'll see you next time.